Okay, so we're looking now at um, creating a program which is going to make use of strings and lists. And the program we've been discussing is the Hangman program. We've done our design for it. Um, we're pretty sure now we need a, uh, a function which is going to look in a string where our, our given word is to find if a letter uh, occurs in that string. So let's have a think about how we're going to do that. So we'll start with our new file and I'm going to create myself a new function um, called def, um, find letter in. And from our design, we know that we are going to be searching for a particular letter. So I need to pass that letter in. And I'm going to be searching for that letter within a particular word. So I need to pass that word in. So there's my basic definition of my function. Obviously, I'll need a main again. And in here for now, I'm just going to set my word to be... I don't know if I make something up to start with um, television and uh, the letter that I'm going to be searching for is going to be the V okay so what do I expect to happen I expect to call my find letter function so I need to call my find letter function. I'm going to pass it the letter that's currently stored in the variable letter. And I'm going to pass it the word that's currently stored in the variable word. They're going to come down into the function and be put into two variables that just happen to have the same name. And what do I want to do within here? Well, I want to actually see if that word, sorry, if that letter occurs within the word. And if so, what position it occurs at. So I'm calling my function there and to call my main program. I'm calling down there. So let's just get going and make sure we can uh, get our function to work first of all uh, and make sure that it's doing the basic things that we, we, we expect it to do. Now obviously word can be varying lengths so I need to find out how long this particular word is. So I'm going to create within the function a new variable called word length and I'm going to call the function len which obviously gets oh, let's type that and I'm going to pass it the argument of the variable word so this now will return how long this word is and I've got a, a count now of how long the word is and just to check everything seems to be working okay I'm going to do for i in range 0 to word length now remember this the way does this work well the word length will be um, as long as the word is so imagine it's got six letters in so this letter will go from zero to six but we remember it only goes up to five within our actual loop which is good because the last index uh, is in fact going to be the position five because the first index is position zero and i'm just going to print each letter in turn so i'm going to print word square brackets i because i is my index value from my for loop and that's going to count from one all the way up to one less than the length of the actual word so let's just have a look if that works So I've got a syntax error somewhere. I've got a main def main. I missed my colon off my def main. Okay, so there we go. You can see it's printed television. So that seems to have worked okay. And if my word was televisions, with an S on the end. Yeah, it prints televisions. Great, so I can certainly uh, get each letter uh, one at a time within this for loop here by indexing it just to reiterate the value i goes from zero up to the word length so if it's six characters long this is zero to six but we know that actually only goes to five which is a good job because the index positions of a six letter word are 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we're definitely getting the, all the letters. Uh, just a minor addition there. I'm not going to um, distinguish between upper and lower case. So I'm just going to make sure my um, all my letters are lowercase within my words. So I can now go through the loop, uh, as I've done here within this for loop. And I can see that I'm printing each letter one at a turn by indexing it here within the string. Really what I want to do now is I want to test it. So I want to say if word brackets I, so that's an individual letter out of the word, is the same as the letter I'm looking for. What do I want to do? Well, for the moment I'll put print and I'm going to just say found at and tell the location. I'm printing the text found at and the location index. Okay, so this should, where we're looking for the letter V, that should tell me it's at 0, 1, 2, position 4, if that works. Uh, end of line. Oh, there I go. Missed me comma and put a apostrophe in instead. Okay. Oh, index is not defined. Why is index R oh, my uh, variable for my loop? I actually called it I, not index. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as a variable I. It is an index into the string. That's why I was calling it index. So here we go. T E L E V. And it found it at 4, t is in position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So indeed it found it. And what do we really want our function to do having found it? Well, we don't want it to print all this information. We want it to send that information back into our main function. So at this particular point within our function, when we found it, we don't actually want it to print. But what we'll do is we'll break out of the loop. Now, I could have just returned from here. Uh, you'll see why I'm going to break uh, out of the loop uh, for this particular case. If I break out of the loop, then I'm back down here. Because now this is where the loop's finished with that indentation. And I'm going to return i. Because i is a position. So that means when we call the function up here, where I call it from, this is where my word is actually going to be returned to. It's going to be returned to this particular part of the function. So I'm going to call this location. It's assigned the return of find letter. So it returns the value of i where it found it. That comes back into the function call up here and now is assigned to location. So back up here, I can now say print. I'm going to say letter, the letter I'm looking for. You can see I'm putting all these um, print statements in here, which ultimately we're not going to need, but they're really useful when we are debugging our code um, to make sure that it is doing what we expect. So we can, we'll delete these out um, as we go through, but for now we're just going to leave them in because it's going to make sense uh, to help us to debug our uh, code and this print I don't want to print that in anymore so I'm not going to delete that I'm just going to um, hash it out alt 3 so that print won't run anymore so let's work out see what happens now <coughs> letter B found at location 4 brilliant and that's right within the, the word I suppose I ought to just print the word at the start there as well so that will make sense when, if we change it uh, in a moment Okay, so word and then letter found at. Okay, so the word is television. The letter V found at location for zero, one, two, three, four. So that certainly works at televisions. Brilliant. So there's our first bit of code, find letter. Uh, and that seems to be doing what we expect. So we'd go back now and start looking at the rest of our design and think about all the other functions that we wanted around that. However, before we move on, one of the good things we need to do when we're 
writing functions is we need to test our functions. We need to test what happens with different cases. Obviously, we were looking for the letter V um, and it found a V. Well, we were expecting it to find a V. What would happen if we look for a letter that wasn't in there? So let's look for an X. Now, we haven't thought about that when we were designing our code, but our test should make us test for such eventualities. OK, so word television letter X found at location. Now, weirdly, that's given me a location 10. So it's telling me that the let X was found at location 10. Where's location 10? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that was actually the last location found. So we need to think about why did that actually happen? Um, well, obviously it went through searching for X. It didn't find X anywhere. So it went all the way around the loop and it got to the end. And having got to the end, the value of I was its last value, which was pointing on the S, and it hit return I anyway. So it sent that information back out having not found it. So hmm, that's kind of not what we're expecting to happen. It's just because we haven't thought about it. Sometimes you can't think about every single eventuality when you're designing the code, but that's the purpose of testing, to try it in different situations. And I'm not worrying about the whole complexity of the Hangman program here. I'm just thinking about searching for letters. So I'd have to think about, well, actually, I didn't even think about that. What should this function return, find letter in, when it doesn't find a function? It should presumably return something. Um, so that's another thing we need to think about. And another test we ought to do, thinking about how the hangman game is played, is what happens if we search for the letter E in television? So let's just run that and see what it gives us. Word television letter E found at location one. Well, indeed it is at location one, it's here. But it's actually at location two, it's at location three as well. Okay, I hadn't thought about that one either. Of course, when you're playing Hangman and you get given a letter, you might find that letter at multiple locations. So I need to go back and think a bit more about my find letter in function. It's not good enough that this function just returns a single value telling me where the letter is because it might have multiple locations that it's been found at, in which case it needs to tell me all of those locations. So what it does now is it gets me to think a little bit more about what this function uh, should do and how it should work. Again, ideally, when we'd actually designed this, we would have thought of all of these criteria. But as often is the case, till you get down to the nitty gritty, you don't spot things like this. So reiterating our find letter in function again, what will it do? We'll give it a letter and a word. And we need it to send us back a the data in some form which tells me all the positions at which that particular letter occurred. It might be one, it could be two, it could be a hundred, I don't know. So from our knowledge of data structures now in Python, we know that this should return what's called a list. It should return a list of all the possible values. So how do we do that? Well, easiest way, and again, there's loads of different ways to do this. This is just the way I'm going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a local variable within the function called lists. And I'm going to put square brackets with nothing inside. So that creates me an empty list. So now there is nothing in that list. And what will I do now as I go through the function, if I find that the letter is at a particular location, I'm not actually going to break out of the loop as I did before. I'm just going to get my list called locations. And I'm going to append to that list the value i. So now our value i is being appended. So let's just go around the loop to make sure we know what's going to happen. The first time we find the letter, so if we were searching for E, we'd find it with a value of I being 1. I will be 1, and the value 1 will be appended to the list of locations. It'll now carry on around this loop, because we're not breaking out, and it should find E again when it gets to here, 
which is position 0, 1, 2 and 3. So I now will be 3 when it next hits this uh, if statement with a true value. So the value 3 now will be appended to the list locations and that will have 1 and 3 in and so on. Thinking about it though, if we don't find the letter anywhere within our word, well, we'll never find a true value for this statement, so nothing will be appended to the list, and our list will remain empty, which actually might solve our other problem. So at the end of this, what do we need to do? We need to return our locations. Now notice this has changed now, because what we're returning locations, so I should change locations, before it was a single value, it's now actually a list. So we'll call it, it doesn't matter, but we'll call it locations up back in main to be uh, consistent with that. Because we've created the list within the function, we now have to return the list back out of the function, um, as you would expect. So let's see how that works. Okay, so list object has no attribute appended. I've spelled append wrong because it's append. Location is not defined. I'm not doing very well here. Um, location is not defined. I missed where the error was. I should have been out a bit quicker looking. Uh, back in line 8, location. Ah, okay. So, yeah, it's because I changed it to locations in the return value here for the function. I hadn't changed it in my print statement. Hooray. So, word television, televisions, letter E, found at locations 1, 3. There it is, at locations 1, 3. And notice the way it's printed it, because we just printed the variable locations. It's a list, which is why it's got the square brackets around it. And there's two items in the list, so separated by, separated by a comma, the value 1 and 3. So that certainly works. Let's just go back and we'll have a look at um, an S, because I know there's a couple of S's in there. And one of the S's at the end, so that's testing that it goes right to the end of our word. Yep, yeah, certainly picking up the letter at the end. Let's just check it for a T. Because I know there's one of those, and that's the beginning of the word. So this should find it at location zero. Again, you can see it's a list there, because it's got the square brackets. There's only one element. And our last check is what happens if it's a letter that doesn't exist in there, like, oops, might the letter C. Letter C found that location and it returns an empty list. So that actually solves the problem now um, that we had before because it's an empty list and that's picked up what happens if we don't get any, uh, any letters found. So we've basically created the core component of our hangman function now and we've tested it quite well we're sure we know what it's doing we're sure that it's finding single letters we assume it's going to find triple and multiple letters if there are more in there i could test that again if i wanted to but i've got that main function written now i can part that to one side and just start using it so well done that's the first part of the hangman game written